And welcome in to Growth Profits, the show that comes to you every single week with ways for you to have happier clients, better results, make more money, and enjoy the ride. I am joined today. This is a very special. We have no balloons or fireworks, but I got to tell you, if we did, they'd all be going off today because we have a very special guest, somebody who means a lot to me, <clears throat> somebody who has become a, a friend, somebody who challenges me in a very big way. Mr. Media Mogul himself at Two Market Media, and you're going to find out what it is that you need to know when it comes to being in the marketplace at a very high level. Stay with us. Hi, folks. I'm Sean Crabtree. And I'm Cameron Bailey. We don't want to change the way you do business. We want to change the way you're thinking about your business. We want you to have better results, have your clients, and make more money. Let's get it started. Welcome back. I'm really excited to have a superstar. Super, could I say duper, super duper star. Mr. Hank Norman, a media mogul himself. Um, Hank, you are with Two Market Media. And before I let you introduce yourself, um, let me just say a few things here. I mean, you have worked with some big names in TV. Uh, one of those of which is not Sean Crabtree. Uh, I mean, I am not the big name. You and I have been working together, all kidding aside. You and I have been working together now for a little over a year, and you have challenged me in so many different ways, pushing me outside of my comfort zone. I have learned so much from you. But you have worked with some bigger names. I mean, you started with The View. You've worked with Steve Harvey, Barbara Walters, the list goes on and on and on. Mel Robbins. Mel is just about to get her daytime talk show. Mel, right. Oh, is she really? I didn't know that. Yeah, just in the news last week. Mel Robbins, uh, Grant Cardone. I mean, some of the really big guys out there. I am privileged to be able to have you on the show, and I'm privileged that I get to work with you on a regular basis. Thanks for joining me, my friend. It's fun to work with you, Sean. You're the best, dude. Look how, as you, you were talking about, you get coaching sessions from my head coaching uh, trainer, media trainer, and Jenny was telling you, look how great you are now, dude. Like, you, like I love you on camera. I like, do you see me? I'm I'm all up in your Facebook. I like your I like it. I like it when Sean has his uh, tank top on and <laughs> his big backyard in the swamps. In the swamps. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's uh I mean I, I was I was not kidding when I said a moment ago I've learned a tremendous amount from you and everybody at Two Market. But specifically, I mean you are you are you have this vision of how things need to go and what needs to happen. Before we get into that, why are we even having this conversation? Well, here's the reason. You have have taught me some things specific when it comes to media, but specifically when it comes to the camera and so forth. I mean if if you are a in the service business as an entrepreneur, if you're a dentist, a CPA, it doesn't really matter if you build fences. I mean, things have changed in the marketplace. You, I see, as the guru. By the way, that that is his uh, address there, Hank Norman Guru. You are the guru when it comes to all of these kinds of things. In a lot of ways, Hank, this is a cutting edge, brand new, uh, at the tip of the spear kind of things that are going on. Tell us a little bit about who it is that you are, what it is that you do, and why it's important that if I'm listening to this, I need to be I need to be engaged. Well, it really, as you have seen and you've truly embraced Sean, which is what makes you, what you guys are doing incredible, because it's like you get this aspect, which to me and you now, it's like second nature, right? Like social media, being in touch and in contact with people. Maybe for you, my man, I got to tell you, Hank, for you, it's second nature. For me, you're still pushing me through. But uh, but it is much more comfortable, yes, than it has been in the past. Sure. But let's talk about that for two seconds. What So what is, for you, because this is obviously totally relatable to who's watching, because we all have those same obstacles. What was the biggest one for you? What was the first one? What was the biggest one? Now, see, this is a setup because you already know what the answer is. No, I, I don't really. Every, I forget. Everybody's different. And maybe you've changed. Like, you've grown. So maybe you, you might have a different answer now than you did in the beginning. Like, it might, might be different. 
Well, I think, you know, if, if here's what's relevant if you're an entrepreneur listening to this. Here's what's relevant with my story. There's so many things that I've learned from you. Number one is uh, you've been drilling into my head, dude, you got to polarize your audience, which for me, a Southern guy was one of the most difficult things in the world. And I'm still kind of sort of pushing through that. Um, and, and by polarizing your audience, what you're saying basically is, <clears throat> dude, be yourself. <clears throat> dude, just be yourself. Sean, quit being so buttoned up, dude. Let me see you in the gym. Let me see you doing this. Let me see you doing that. That was really, really tough for me. It still is, uh, is really tough for me. I totally understand where it is that you're trying to go philosophically, but I think I think before we get into all of that, oh, are you making? No, that's important. I'm writing that down. Like I, for, I forget those simple things. Being yourself, business people don't want to be themselves. Business people have been trained. What the reason this is cutting edge and tip of the spear? It's not. It's common sense if you actually <laughs> think about it, right? Because it's, like, it's not common practice, my friend. Correct. You want more business means you want more people to see you. You want more business. You want more people to know you. How do you get more customers? You expose yourself in the media, whether you're paid advertisements or free, anything to get more eyeballs on you, you should be exploring. That's just common sense. Now, in execution, as you just said, how do you do that? The simplest way is to be yourself. What we've learned is, oh, I've got to be in, I've got to be this version that would show up in an in an in the Super Bowl ad, or I've got to be, I've got to, I've got to create a character that people will want. I have to be a commodity that I think people will want to buy, and when, and pe we just naturally do that. I think my, I having a daughter. My daughter's eight now, but seeing her change when we would go to film her record. I still say film like there's any film in the phone. Right. We would video record my daughter. She, you know, even as a toddler before she could speak English she would become proper. Like, so there is something I've learned through, through having a daughter that's like, there's this version that we already know in our, we know this is real. Other people are going to see us. They're going to judge us. This is recorded for posterity. Like she's aware of that. And we become presentable. That's the death knell of a brand. And I think that was one of the most uh, and probably still is one of the most difficult things that, that I go through. I think if I'm listening to this and, you know, I'm driving down the road and, and, and I'm, let's say, a dentist or a, an attorney or let's say that I'm a uh, commercial contractor or, or, or whatever it is that I do, um, you know, what you're saying essentially is this. In the old days, right, for you to get known, you had to be either through, you had to have that wherewithal, uh, dollars or whatever, or the connections or whatever, or both, to be able to get through in a network, you know, in a ma I'm talking about in a massive way, to be able to reach a lot of people, you had to do that on television. Now, we're seeing it completely the opposite. It's the other way around. So much so that television is losing its luster. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, social media has completely taken over television. You know, the CMAs were here in Nashville last night, and I'm noticing in the commercial... I bet you watched the CMAs, didn't you? Uh, just the highlights. Yeah. <laughs> I know Hank is not a country music fan, uh, but, you know, even even in the, in the commercial... They're pumping while they're on TV. They're pumping. Uh, go on social media and find us here. So... In a lot of ways, for the first time, I think in the history, certainly of my lifetime, the level of the playing field is completely leveled. And anybody who has a business can reach people. But the trick of how to do that is what you've been coaching me on. Getting out of your comfort zone, all of the things that we coach our clientele on, you're coaching me on. Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your head. Be real. Be raw. Put it out there. And when you say it like this and you and I are talking, that sounds great. But doing it on a regular basis is a very difficult thing. You've been working with some of the greatest people out there. And you work with everyday people like me as well. Right. And so I think you actually have one of the most difficult challenges because I did start my career in television 
in the late 80s, early 90s. I've been in television my whole life. And working with quote unquote talent, people that want to be on television, that seek a career in the limelight, they don't have this problem that you're describing because they're there, they, there's attention seekers. So they're there That's to find really that. Point. Yeah, so <laughs> that was the biggest change for me as a, as a coach was because business people, and I, I fall into this camp, people tell me, oh, you you coach Grant, you coach Mel, you co coach, I coach Tim Story, I coach, I coach a lot of people, I coach, so many people, names, some people would probably prefer I not tell you their names. Bob Burke? They want, to, they want to feel and seem like they have that all taken care of, but that version of them being themselves, they get that already. I'm not that. I'm a business person, and people go, oh, you coached all these people, but you're not that famous yourself. And I'm like, yeah, I don't like to do this either. <laughs> I don't like it. So I get it. I know what a pain in the ass it is. And here's the thing I also know, because A, now I live in New York City, and I've had X number of dentists in the city. And what I've noticed, even from a child in a small town, and say, I grew up a redneck in the eastern shore of Maryland. My dentist was the town, there was one dentist in St. Michael's, John Swan. And uh, he was a dentist for everybody. And going to Dr. Swan and going to my dentist now are eerily the same. And here's the problem. That means you're going against decades Mm -hmm. decades right. of this ingrained thing of the music's on softly in the waiting room. <laughs> and I know, I know why it's there. I know why it's there. Going to the dentist is scary for a lot of people. It's the, it, I get it. I know the reason this whole level of making the, the, the customer feel better and the ambiance and that the routine and the calmness of dentistry, but that's also in the media in using the media if you're going to talk about yourself in your practice, I don't want just that tone. That means everybody would be operating at that same plane. I'm not saying you couldn't have that aesthetic to your voice right. and to your practice, but I'm saying if you actually leaned into just being yourself and being calming, not in the... So I do work with a lot of doctors. The biggest problem with doctors is they've developed what I literally as a media coach feel is a very phony way of dealing with people because they're only in the, I got to make the patient feel better mode. Ah. That is not the media. Mm -hmm. So if and why it's hard to do for doctors, for dentists, I understand why. The bedside manner was developed for you to be a better doctor and have a better patient-doctor relationship. That bedside banner, that really weird, I, can't, I was about to imitate it, I was gonna fall asleep. I can't even imitate the <laughs> things that's supposed to put you at ease. You can't do that in the media. Mm. No one's going to listen to you or watch that when that's a video. Mm. That, the way you interact with patients is not how you need to show up in the media. And so we go to the ideas and then what you were just talking about, which is, so how am I supposed to behave? The easiest thing to do is, just don't unlearn those things and just show me yourself. So, 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 listen, you're talking good stuff. And let me ask you this. Let's, let's back up one step before that. <clears throat> let's say that I am in a, an entrepreneurial business. I could be a dentist or I could be anything else. Okay, here's my first question. If I'm listening to this and, I, and, I'm, and I'm going, man, Hank is the dude. I'm, I'm driving down the road. Which, by the way, most of the people who are listening to us are, are driving down the road. They're on their phones and so forth. Um. So if I'm driving down the road and I'm listening to this, I'm going, you know, I'm following you, Hank. I mean, I'm getting all that. But, but let's go back to the, to the question before that. I mean, are you saying that I need to? Like, like, why do I even need to be learning this? Are you saying that I need to be putting myself out there? Because i got to answer that question first before I'm going to go into this other part. If I am a fill-in-the-blank entrepreneur, why do you, Hank Norman, think is important for me? to put myself out there. How do I do that? What does it even look like? And why is it important? Let's start with the first question. You know you have to put yourself out there. I mean, if you're just gonna go by the old ads and running ads in newspapers that nobody's reading, you're making <laughs> old choices. <laughs> Who's seeing your ads? Mm -hmm. Everybody's on social media. If you're not in social media in a way that represents you and your business, you're irrelevant. There's no business in, what are you, taking out ads on TV? The ones, you mean the ones I skip over on my TiVo? <laughs> like, 
I'm not watching your ads. The ads aren't there. What I am subscribing to are Instagram feeds, Facebook pages, Twitter. Like I'm inter. I want. I want to know somebody's a real person. And I think people still say, "Oh, a dentist, a doctor. I need. I need people to see and feel me. How they've always experienced me in my office, and how I want to be at arm's length." And I'm saying, "Sorry, that's, that's over. You don't get that comfort anymore." I'm going to use that quote again, and, I, and I'm going to attribute Hank to that, Mr. Producer, every time I use it, okay? If you are not in social media, you are irrelevant. That is, that, you know what, we're going to, I think we should make, that should be a theme. Uh, we call it, we'll call it Ode to Hank is what we'll do. That should be, that's, that's great. And so step one is I got to recognize that before I can begin to understand what it is that you're telling me to do, which is I've got to lean into being myself. Now, if I'm driving down the road, you know, and and I'm a, uh, let's say, a commercial contractor, I'm going, dude, that sounds good. I get it. I need to be in social media because I don't want to be irrelevant. I got to be out there. But, man, this whole concept of, like, really being myself on camera, how far do you think – that I should take it. I mean, if you're talking to that commercial contractor, what are you telling me I should do here? Well, the biggest one that gets you in contact with really starting to have people understand who you are is let's just start with, with the basics of your business. What are you doing and how does it impact your customer, your client? Whether it's you telling that story, whether it's the better version of that, of you showing me how you, how you actually work with and how you're, you're, service or your product impacts the emotional impact the real change the real fix the real story like if, let's, just, let's just use dentists if people are coming to you why are they coming to you what makes you different than everyone else that's a huge piece second of all when they come to you because they come to you for this or that or the other thing even if it's mundane even if it's normal how is what you do different and impactful for your patients, your clients, how are you really helping them? On what level? How? Let me into the process, because guess what? If I could see that, if I could hear from you, if I could see you do it, and actually show me the procedure, some a facsimile of the procedure so I understand that, and also then see or meet a client or someone who, who visited your office, and then say, I went in with this, I was nervous, they put me in ease, they fixed my problem, and I left, I'm better than ever, those ideas you are making what is previously known as commercials. <laughs> Talking about what you're up to is what social media thrives on, the truth, the honesty, the openness of your commitment to your business, your commitment to your clients, your commitment to the, the integrity you have to help in your community. Start having that conversation. So how much of that, Hank, and I think, see, I think, I think, I think what you just said is probably, here's what I think. I think, in my dealings with, with people for over 25 years, um, you know, I think what you're talking about there is probably, I think that makes the most sense. I think if I'm driving down the road, I'm going, you know what, I really get that. And, and, I, think, and, I, and I can see, if you, since you mentioned a dentist, I can see a dentist being really comfortable putting out, <clears throat> putting out cases before and afters and all those sorts of things. But now, the thing that, that you're also saying, and this is where the challenge comes in, is you're saying you got you got to you got to in, you got to input your personal self into all of that, and the person who is the patient who is who is watching you on a regular basis, it can't be all about what you do. It's got to be about who you are, what you stand for, what you're committed to, in addition to what you do and how you do it and how you do it. Okay. And I think that's where the challenge is. I would submit that the people who are listening to us right now are going, that's the tough part. Now, Hank, if you're telling me I need to put some before and afters, dude, I could do that every single day, all day long, no problem. But now when you want me to be in front of the camera, how does that look? How do I, and, and, and where do I, how, do, how far do I go in terms of exposing myself? Well, I don't, I don't have a fear of anybody going too far because we're all reticent to go there to begin with. So that idea, just the language alone of you using that, that's just the fear talking. Like, what if I go too far? Right. Too far into what? Your integrity? Your interest in your business? Your interest in actually having satisfied clients? Right. <laughs> but it is how to talk about it. Like, so I can, I can speak to my dentist because 
I've told him these things, and whether he does them or doesn't do them, they're true for anybody or anybody doing things similar to this, which is over the past year, he got new equipment. So when I come in for my checkup and the cleaning, like the cleaning is so like the, the thing they hang in your mouth and the water, th like so the first time in my life, I just turned 52 years old. I'm fi finally after 51 years, I no longer feel like I'm drowning when they're cleaning my teeth. They went to this softer jet thing or something. They upgraded all their equipment. I've never, ever in 50 years on this planet had a more pleasurable experience having my teeth cleaned. That, to me, would be something they should be – like, people like, – I would go – if somebody told me that they had the most pleasurable experience, right. Right. I'm like, I would quit. Any, I would drive – hundreds of miles out of my way to not feel like I was drowning anymore. Right. I, was waiting, I was waiting 51 years for that experience to happen. Listen, when you, when you get Mr. Producer uh, laughing back there, you're, you're making sense, my friend. You but you got to talk about it. You got to, what seems mundane to you because that's your business. And you're like, oh yeah, we upgraded our machines a year ago. And I don't, it doesn't, it's, it's no big deal to you. I don't give a shit what's a big deal to you. I'm talking about what's in the impact of what you're doing and how you're doing it on your customer. Listen to them. Allow that to be your message. Lead with the impact of what you do on your customer. Talk about it. Show what, here's the thing. If I was a dentist, dude, I'm not scared because I'm not coming with the baggage of decades of how we used to do stuff. So I would come in and, I, and once every whatever quarter, I would say, I would run a, a raffle or something. Who wants free dental work, soup to nuts, no matter what it is, but the deal is I'm gonna record everything and I'm gonna put it on social media. So who wants to sign up for free dental? Meanwhile, I'm gonna record every aspect of it and release it online. And I'm going to blow the doors off my competition because I'm going to show you how great I am. I'm going to show you how great I am. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to show you how great I am. Awesome. Good stuff, man. All right, so, so Hank, if I, I love it when you get fired up, man. If, I am a, uh, if I'm a real estate person, you know, I would submit if I'm driving on the road, I go, man, you're preaching my language, dude. I see this. I mean, I, I got to be out there. I got to be, um, I got to be, you know, all over social media. But the things that they're all over social media about are here's this commercial business I have for sale or here's this, you know, property that I have or this beautiful house for sale. Or and you're saying that's not enough. <laughs> so so you got to put your personal um you got you to open the lens you got to open the aperture so that listing that house who is it right for how, how would getting that house benefit somebody in what bracket with how much money like tell me the stories of how you know you're, the right person for this is this type of person and how you know this property would help because of it's near this school. What's the story? What's the much, reason? So, so, so Hank, how much does your personal brand play? Does, I, if I'm not a real estate person, or, I mean, whether I'm a real estate, uh, uh, real estate salesperson or whether I'm a, a dentist or whether I'm a medical doctor, right? Okay, whatever it is, an attorney, CPA. How much does my personal brand play into that? And how much, and, 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 and like I said a moment ago, um, ha help me get past if I'm listening to this for the first time and I'm going, dude, I got no problem with any of that stuff and I hear what you're saying and I can, I can really focus on the impact. But now when you talk about putting myself out there personally, dude, that doesn't feel good, right? How do you get past that and what are you looking for? Well, you know how to get past that because... I think once you really lock into, at the end of the day, that's all somebody's really buying, right? Why am I going to the dentist I'm going to? They're all the same. They all cost the same. They all basically do the same thing. You're going to a dentist for that one person, that bedside matter, their personality. At the end of the day, when you go into any shop, you're buying that person. You choose their personality. You choose the friendship. You choose the relationship. Social media is where that begins. 
There are no cold calls with social media. Everything is a warm lead. You're letting people know you. I come to you, I buy from you because I like you. <laughs> and I think, and I think you know, this is something, there's no doubt that I, I am learning this, Hank, and, and I, I, but it's tough. I mean. What's the tough part, dude? I honestly, I'm, I don't, there's nothing tough about it. Well, it's tough for you as well as, I mean, all of us are pushing ourselves through. No, it's tough for me to show up because I don't like showing up on camera, but I know that I have to do it. I don't either. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's what I mean is a tough part, dude. I don't like it either. Um, I know it's necessary. Yeah, I know it's. I'm necessary. just lazy. And I've and I've learned. You know, you've you've pushed me to the point where um, my wife was making fun of me because the other morning uh, we were first having this cold weather come in, and I just got back from the gym and I had on like a beanie cap. I mean, I look like something that had just been drug in off the street, dude. You know what I'm saying? And I did a live video. And and my wife is like, uh, wow. Uh, for her first reaction was, dude, you look terrible. But her second reaction was, wow, you're kind of getting comfortable with this. And my answer was, no, I'm really not. <laughs> but but I'm pu but I'm pushing through it because I'm just trying to be myself. Um, so you know, it's 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 a tough thing. If I am, you know, you know. Let's get into some of the nuts and bolts. Let's get into some of the weeds, right? If I'm an entrepreneur, how just just somebody who has no exposure to what it is that you're talking about, they understand the concepts we talked about so far, dude. If you're not on social media, you're irrelevant. Two, you got to put yourself out there on a regular basis. From the standpoint, like you said, of how what you do impacts people. By the way, what you do impacts people my friend, in a very big way. Um, I really enjoyed reading all those birthday wishes to you the other day from people all over the world um, that you had, had made an impact in their lives. It's got to feel good, Hank Norman. Yeah, I mean, that, it, you know, we all have a grind. You go to work and by this, what social does give you and it is the feedback, is the close of that loop, whereas on my birthday, people took it upon themselves to say, not just happy birthday, but dude, like I need you to know how you've actually impacted my life. And it's like, wow, you know, we forget, you know, I'm busy like anyone else in my day. You forget how grateful people are for the service and the help you've given them. So, and social media provides that by putting out what little I do of me and my personality It is nice to see the closed loop of it's that feedback loop. But like, I certainly fall into that category, and I enjoyed reading what everybody was saying, all of the nice things. But if I'm listening to this and I'm going, dude, I got it, man. Uh, you know, I need to put out there how what I do impacts people, regardless of what my service industry is. I got all of that. Let's get in the weeds just a minute, Hank. If I'm listening to this and I'm understanding it all, but I've not been exposed to it in a major way, or I've been... I've been seeing the value in it, but I don't really know how I need to get started. Get in the weeds for a second. Buddy, how would you tell people who are just hearing this for the first time, how often should I be out there? Should it be on a regular basis? Should it be um, theme-specific? I don't, I don't mean theme-specific in terms of what you do to impact people. I'm talking about theme-specific, et cetera. Like what, 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 would you, what would you tell them if I'm just learning this? I would say once a day in any one particular social media platform, Facebook, Instagram, whatever suits you, wherever people like to find you or you like to post is beginning to figure out how to have a, like, it's a relationship. You, you really want to look at this as customers aren't what they used to be. Like it wasn't just go to a store, buy something and leave. It's much different than that now. And social has just added to that. But that level of trust has to be there. Like creating that relationship with your audience, that's what you need to start talking in, in your mind and it, even openly and, and fostering that relationship, that openness with your customer, with your client begins with you once a day, talking to camera for a minute, two minutes and saying, this is what I'm up to. This is what I want to do. Here's the thing. It, it isn't a commercial because part of what I also would like from people uh, that I buy from that are experts and dentists and anybody selling something is their openness also want to learn from me. People love to give their feedback. If you're open to the idea that social media isn't just a one way out, 
It, right. it, does, it does provide that. The biggest thing social media is, is the completion of that loop. If you were to ask me how to help you or what do you do, ask, if you said, how can I help you better? How can I be better at, at what I do? Uh, what am I already doing that's benefit? Like I asked you, like I wanted to hear from you what help, I want to hear that first obstacle because that helps me now keep that in mind because I forget that first step of the feeling of, oh, me putting myself out there is still the first thing, that fear, that, that feedback helps me. And if you create that environment, if you create that feedback loop, now you're not just creating interesting customers, you're creating fans, you're creating people that will go and talk about you and your service to other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's radically different. Yeah. Just by making a bit, just by reaching out once a day, talking, creating connection with your audience. It's not about sales. It's about connection. Right. The reason what I do and impact. transcended from the entertainment industry to businesses is because because of social media, being entertaining and interesting is a component of it. The second piece is they want you. Will Smith is doing it the best of every person, big star out there today. No one's doing it as well as Will Smith. If you don't follow him on Instagram, follow him on Instagram. Will Smith has effectively taken his huge star power and turned it into, like, I literally am following. It's like following another friend of mine. I know when he, he jumped out bungee cord on his birthday. Like, mm -hmm. all the stuff he's up to, like, Will Smith is my friend now. Right. That connection, dude. I think I'm not saying he is, because you know full well he's not. Will yeah. Smith is not a friend of mine. I do not know Will Smith, but I have that connection with him. I rely on it. If if I don't see him in a day or two, I'll go find him. Like if it doesn't come up my feet, I miss Will Smith. That's that's good stuff. And and Will, if you're listening, call me. Call me, yeah. You can get in the next uh, Independence Day. There you go. There you go. Um, dude, how did you get into this? We kind of skipped over that. I think that's important. I mean, you, you got a really, you got a really cool tale. Um, the, the, the way back story is that, um, connect the, the piece that is the crux of this that we're talking about is the thing for me personally that was missing in my life. My dad was very authoritarian and I saw the, like I was a cut up in school. So my dad was so rigid and structured and angry and mad at all four of us kids that I was seeking attention anywhere I could. And I literally went out of my way uh, accidentally as a cut up and someone that went to the principal's office quite frequently uh, growing up in school <laughs> to just being attracted to entertainment and performance but then I was also too shy to be a performer so it, I got close to performance by becoming a producer so I was so I was close to the stars but I was behind the scenes like I was always just riding that line and I literally made it my job from a teenager to study performance from Steve Martin comedy's not pretty to Richard Pryor live on the sunset strip and things I would just listen to and wine Carlin and just really study what it's like to put yourself out there Com comedy and comedians to me are the foundation of yeah, I agree with connection that. yeah. that's who they are their person Eddie Murphy in raw that's Eddie like when you see a comedian perform they're being themselves in the realest rawest sense and that idea and transcending that into working on a show like The View in the beginning with Meredith and Debbie and Joy and Star and really helping those people pick this version of who they are and how to put those things out there to really create a connection with, and which has, I mean, The View still on because of the, the very foundation of those ideas that getting to know Star and getting to know Joy and getting to know uh, Debbie at the time and just really getting, allow, helping people let people in and, and show who they are, sometimes warts and all, sometimes not, sometimes the sad, sometimes the good, and seeing that, that that's what, it's about everything, right? Like, I'll buy from you, I'll come to your shop, I'll, I want to be your client, if you're willing to let me in. And that, that me being such a student of that, because it was deprived of me by my dad, just it makes me hungry for that 
that answer. Like, how do I let people in and how do people let me in and how can I help people do that? And it, I've created an entire business around it because it's, it's my life, basically. So if I, you know, there, there are people who are listening to this right now who are going, dude, I mean, you're throwing out some big names there, man. You're talking about, you know, Eddie Murphy and uh, and some of those guys and people on The View and all that, you know, and they're going, dude, you know, but Hank, I mean, you know what? I just, uh, you know, I build fences for a living, man. I build fences for a living and, and I don't have to be, you know, world famous. I just want to make a little money. And I, I, I had a post on Facebook like a week ago that I knew would push some buttons for some people. I, li I just literally wrote, wrote one simple sentence. Why are you not a household name yet? Yeah, I saw that. And, and there was a certain percentage of people replying, go, well, why aren't you? Or why would that, why is that a good thing? Right. And for people that have three layers where they feel that's accusatory, or they see that as a negative. Like I got two separate people that didn't, I know didn't read each other's posts because literally there's hundreds of replies. Two people said, yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer is also a household name. They jumped, they jumped to the worst part because they're not in touch with what's really going on, which is the more people that know and like you, the more people you can be in business with. It doesn't have to be a shame. It doesn't have to be a flaw in your personality anymore to want people to know you. And that is, that I have to remind myself of that. We, we were brought up in a society, in an era, you and particularly, I don't know if my daughter falls under this category, and maybe she doesn't, but there's a shame in self-promotion. And yeah, I don't want to be famous. I don't want, maybe you do, maybe you don't. And maybe you do just build fences, but you don't just build fences. You're not just a fence guy. Right. You're a fence guy and you, you have an ethic. You have a thing you're bringing to that. Whether you hate that job or not, right. there's something about you and the quality of your work that, hey, if you really don't like it and don't want to share what you're up to, then don't do it. But if you really are interested in people getting to know how you're a little bit different and approach this better and different than someone else, that's about you, dude. Like, we want to get to know you. I had a doctor tell me one time, you know, Sean, listen, at the end of the day, you know, like, 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 I don't want to put myself out there, man. You know, I want to fly like under the radar. Cause if I put myself out there, man, people will know what I'm up to. Yeah. 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 Sean, I don't want to put myself out there. I don't want to open the door today. I don't want any sales. I don't want any money. I don't want to eat. <laughs> right. That's right. I just want to fly under the radar, dude. I don't want anyone to notice me. I don't want anyone to buy from me. I don't want anyone to like me. I don't want anyone to trust me. <laughs> That's right. But what you but what you're saying, Hank, is is a big thing because it is fear based. It's fear based, and one of the biggest things that I think everybody deals with is they don't want to have the hater. They don't want to have the no, hater. no, no. They don't want to take the risk. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, they don't. They don't want to take the risk. So we all come up with stories of why we can't. Exactly. I just want to fly under the radar. That's not my style, Sean. I'm not. And meanwhile, meanwhile, that guy at the party is the loudest guy at the party, dude. That's right. I just want to fly under the radar. Meanwhile, he's holding court with ten people, telling his old fishing stories. Come on, man. Or, or it's the other way around. You know, he wants to fly under the radar, but then he's bitching because he's not making any money. He can't. You know, he doesn't feel like that. What he's doing is bringing him value personally, professionally. He's all burned out because he doesn't want to take responsibility. Because he doesn't want to take the risk. Exactly. Of showing up as himself on camera and have people go, eh, we don't really like you, dude. But you know what? I think there's a part of that. But here's the other part. If I am a, if I am in business and I'm going to put myself out there, um, you know, I think the biggest fear, I think, you know what? I think people, I think people look at haters as I got a bad review. I got a bad Google review. Do you know what I'm saying? I think yeah. they, I think they look at it like that. What would you say to that? That happens. I have bad. Go to my. Uh, no, no, I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm saying go to my page, and one of the bad reviews on my Facebook page is someone I went out of my way to help. That's people. Like, it's bad. It's just part of it, dude. Like, yeah, you can't live in fear of someone who's going to criticize, whether rightly or wrongly. Like, if you have a bad product or something, then you address that and you clean it up and you do that publicly as well. 
That's the accountability. That's the people wanting to know you're listening to them. And that's what makes it real. At the end of the day, that's you just being real. I don't mind bad reviews. I like it when people don't like me because I'm not, hey, I'm not, I can't service everybody. So I'm not for everybody. Let's see, everyone. let's see what you just said right there. You know, I like bad reviews. I mean, you know, but there are people out there that are going, oh my God, I, I, oh, that would kill me. There are business. That's the la- that's the fear talking because you're like, the old paradigm was appeal to everyone about everything. <clears throat> Stop doing that. You don't want to appeal to everyone about everything. That's not your job. Let your personality, let your opinions, let your perspective and how you approach the job be the delimitator. Find clients you really want to work with rather than pimping yourself out to go to everybody and, and hating your job. You start doing your work your way, in my way, by being yourself, you, your job enjoyment, your, your, your love, the passion for what you do will skyrocket, guaranteed. If you're listening to this, that is like the 15th nugget that you've gotten so far. Your, 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 your uh, ability, which is what this show is all about, your ability to enjoy the ride will skyrocket. And if you think about it, what you just said, <clears throat> all of the things that you don't enjoy that are affecting your ability to have a great ride are probably those people that are hating anyway. <laughs> That's where all the issues are, man. Those 20%. You know what? Get them out of your life and go get some more of the 80% until you get to 100%. Dude, why do I enjoy coaching Grant Cardone and enjoy coaching Sean Crabtree and enjoy coaching Judge Jean Pirro and enjoy coaching Mel Robbins and enjoy coaching anybody is because they're all people that are interested on making an impact. They're cool. They're fun. They're interested. They're not letting the fear of judgment, of saying the wrong thing. Of It's like people that want to move forward, dude. That's who I like to move, work with. So if you ain't in that group, good. Please do not try to hire me. I will fire you. <laughs> Hank, you are the man. I love you, brother. I really, uh, I really love you. Man, um, you know what? We got to do this again, and we got to get into the weeds more at a different level. I really appreciate all this, the, the way that you look at this stuff. You are out there on the cutting edge. We didn't even talk about some important things. I mean, you've got star power you going on, right? I mean, if I am, uh, if I am in an entrepreneurial business, and I, how do I, and I'm listening to this, how do I find out more about you and star power you and everything that you have going on at Two Market? So, you know, basically what I've done is come up with a way that, because working with me and working with two market media is, it's a big thing. Like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hefty price tag. It may be for you. It may not be for you. But what I've done going and speaking at, at grants, the growth cons and speaking around the country at other gigs. I have another one in New York uh, later this month and helping people either just starting out or for a smaller price tag. Right. So I took my methodology and put it on X amount of hours of video that I guarantee you at the feedback I've gotten, it, it's a game changer. It will change your business. It will change how you approach business. It will change how you talk about what you do in social and give you all the things we didn't get into of the details, the granularity of how to build a base of really rabid fans of building that connection with your audience. I just codified what we do as a business, literally put it literally. I mean, I, I've said this a bunch of times. It's so true. I put more work into that coursework than anything I've ever produced in my life. It's awesome. It's everything I know. It, it, the workbook alone is like 50 pages. If you do the work, if you only do some of the work <laughs> in my course, it will change your life. And that's called Star Power You. Yes, it's, a, it's, a, it's an online course. Uh, that we've called Star Power You, basically the play on it's you, but it's also like a university. It's the education you need to get granular in the media and really blow up your business. So if they want to find you, they can catch you. What is the best place? What's the one place you want them to find you at? Well, you know, that, my course is on my Facebook. Hank Norman. Uh, I, Facebook, I, of course I am, but I'm like an old person, like the President of the United States. I'm most active on Twitter. So if you, if you really want to talk to me, interact with me, or hear what I'm thinking day to day, uh, hour to hour, 
Uh, you can find me on Twitter as, as the most active. Okay, great. And they can find you at hanknorman.guru. Awesome. My friend, it's been a pleasure. We got to do this again. We got to get into the weeds more. Um, you know, some of the things that you're pushing me on, I'd, I'd love to even be able to talk about some of that next time we're, we're together. Yeah. Hank Norman, thank you so much uh, for joining us on Growth Profits. Listen, at the end of the day, we got Hank and everybody else, and every time we come to you, it's all for one thing. It's for you to have happier clients, better results, make more money, and enjoy the ride. Thanks, Hank. Talk to you soon.